As we reported at the top of the hour, foreign aid to Ukraine and Israel is on hold as negotiations around border policy stall in the Senate. So far today, senators have not returned to the bargaining table as both sides lob accusations of stonewalling. And just moments ago, the tension spilled over into the all-Senate briefing on Ukraine, with Senator Kramer telling NBC News that a group of Republicans walked out of the briefing after they tried to bring border funding into the discussion. I'm joined now by someone in that room, Democratic Senator uh, from Connecticut, Chris Murphy. He, of course, serves as a member of both the Senate Foreign Relations Committee and the Senate Appropriations Committee uh, and is one of the lead negotiators as it comes to this uh, talk about uh, border policy. So, first, Senator, just give us an idea of exactly what happened uh, in this briefing. Uh, why did a certain group of Republicans walk out? Well, this is a classified briefing, so we're not actually supposed to talk about what happens in classified briefings. Um, I'm not a big fan of political theater. What I saw inside that briefing looked like an exercise in political theater. Uh, listen, here's the problem. Um, Ukraine is going to lose this war to Russia. Kyiv will be a Russian city. Putin will have a green light to march on NATO and Europe if we don't support Ukraine and fight Putin at this incredibly important moment. Republicans have decided that they are going to demand that an issue totally unrelated to Ukraine, immigration, get solved before they save the world from Putin's aggression. Now, I have a lot of personal priorities that I'd like to see solved as well. I could demand that unless Republicans solve the gun violence epidemic in this country, that I'm not going to vote for Ukraine aid. I don't do that. Because I know that the only place that we, the only way we make this place work is by taking one issue at a time. And support for our allies abroad um, is of critical importance right now. So um, until Republicans start being reasonable about their demands on border policy, then um, Ukraine's funding and the security of the world is at risk. All right, well, talk about where the negotiations stand right now. Do you see an opening? Uh, for you to get together with your Republican colleagues and have substantive conversations? Or is the situation, is there just too much tension right now for there to be any progress? Well, I, I still remain hopeful that we'll be able to um, come to an agreement, um, but it has to be a bipartisan agreement. Yesterday, several Republican senators suggested that they're not interested in negotiations, that Democrats need to simply meet their demands or they will cut Ukraine off and they will welcome Vladimir Putin into Europe. Um, that's not how compromise works. I have strong beliefs, but I also understand that I have to sit down at the negotiating table and make a compromise. Republicans right now are not signaling they're interested in a compromise. They're interested in dictating the terms of the border changes to the country. And frankly, the, their terms are not supported by the country. Right now, they're demanding that the entire border be shut down, that we hand the president enormous emergency powers that would be abused by presidents. Um, that's not good for the country. That's not good for the legislative branch. And I'm hopeful that we'll be able to get into an actual uh, rational conversation about compromise. Okay, so tell me where you are willing to compromise then. I understand where you don't want to go, but where are there areas where you think that you could find common ground with Republicans to try and move something across the table? Yeah, I don't negotiate through the uh, sort of open channels of the press. We're having a private conversation with Republicans. I've expressed my frustration generally about the fact that they have not brought comp compromise proposals to the table. Um, but what I think we can do is come to an agreement that results in far fewer people crossing the border who have illegitimate claims of asylum than cross now. That should be our goal, not to shut down the entire border to people who have legitimate asylum claims, people that are legitimately fleeing terror and torture. That's the best of the United States, being able to bring people to this country who are being saved from violence. But it is in our interest to reduce the number of people who are crossing who don't have legitimate claims, who are just coming here as economic migrants and don't want to go through the traditional pathways. That's the conversation that we can have if Republicans are are open to it. All right, so should Democrats at this point just put something on the table and essentially dare Republicans to vote against it? Well, we're running out of time. I mean, we, we can't let Republicans dictate the schedule of the Senate floor. And so, yes, we are putting a bill on the floor um, that can be the platform for these negotiations. I hope the Republicans vote for it. Um, they, will, they would still reserve their right to vote against the bill later on down the line, but we need to open debate 
on this national security emergency funding bill so that if we do come to an agreement on this border demand that Republicans have made unnecessarily, uh, then we at least have a bill that's on the floor that we can add an amendment to. We're just running out of time right now, so we need to get moving. So you alluded to this at the top of our interview, but if I could get you to, to kind of go into it a little bit more. Yesterday, the White House warned that resources could run out by the end of the year for Ukraine. I mean, talk to me what you know and can share. I know a lot of what you know is classified about the current situation in Ukraine and the impact on Ukraine if this deal doesn't get done. So I think actually the White House warning was more dire than that. They said Ukraine will run out of funding from the United States. Uh, in fact, the administration is, has no additional money or authority to purchase weapons or systems for Ukraine. Now, what they can do without congressional approval is to continue to give Ukraine U.S. weapons and U.S. weapon systems. But we have transferred so much of our own equipment to Ukraine already that we would compromise our own security if we continued that flow. And that's what we absolutely cannot do. I will never support um, transfers of equipment to Ukraine if that compromises my own country's national security. What a NATO general said a few weeks ago is that the barrels of the Ukrainian guns are about to be empty. They are literally not going to have ammunition to shoot at Russian troops um, if we don't get them additional funding by the end of the year. That means for the next winter fighting season, Russia will be able to start winning territory back. And sometime next year, Russia could be in Kyiv. That would be a global disaster. That's the stakes of what we're talking about. And, and are you worried that if the United States doesn't step up with its funding, that other countries that have been supportive could do the same? Well, that will be the consequence. Um, there is no way that Europe can fund this fight on their own, in part because there are certain weapons and certain weapon systems that only the United States possesses. And so if we shut off Ukraine from U.S. funding and U.S. weapons expertise, uh, then Europe will not be able to pick up the balance uh, on their own. They will start to draw back from this fight. And once again, we will see Putin marching into Ukraine and also getting a green light that he can go into a NATO country, that he can go into a country like Moldova and, you know, just keep the fight up for a year and a half. After a year and a half, the West will lose patience and hand that country to Putin. This won't end in Ukraine if this is Ukraine's fate. If you're able to get an agreement on the border, there are some of your Democratic colleagues that are concerned that there should be at least some conditions put on aid, maybe to Israel and Ukraine, as opposed to just giving them a blank check. Do you agree with that? Do you think that the, the administration should put conditions on that aid? Well, generally, we put conditions on aid that's sent to foreign countries. Um, at the minimum, we should always require that any money we send an ally is being used in accordance with international law and with U.S. law. Um, what I've said is that when it comes to Israel, I'm open to that conversation. Um, I've been very clear that I think Israel needs to defeat Hamas. They need to um, knock out their military capabilities. But I've also been clear, I think, the rate of civilian death inside Gaza has been far too high. So I'm open to providing the same kind of conditionality um, on aid for Israel that we might require other countries not going beyond that. Okay, Senator uh, Chris Murphy, on a very busy day, sir, we appreciate you being here. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.